This is the iconic Swedish M40 military mess kit. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on it, whether it's something you should have for your bushcraft adventures, keep watching. All right, before we begin, I just want to take a moment to thank one of my subscribers, Eric, who lives in Denmark, who sent me this Swedish military mess kit as a gift with no expectations of doing a review, just simply a thank you for all that I produce on YouTube. But having used this gift for some time now, I really do want to share it with you and the value it has to you as a possible bushcraft item. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you the contents of the kit. I am going to do a short history on the M40 military mess kit. Then we're going to give you some dimensions. We'll talk a little bit about how it is intended to be used. I'll talk a little bit about some comparisons of this with some other kits of approximately the same weight and size. All right, let's get started. Before we begin talking about the history of the M40 Swedish military mess kit, I just want to declare that I am in no way any type of an expert or even a serious history buff when it comes to military gear. I appreciate what this is and what it's designed to do for the military, but my primary interest is, is this something that I can use or will use while I'm out in the woods? And it is, as you'll see. But what I did learn through doing a little bit of research, as I found actually quite interesting, and that is there has been some type of mess kit in use by the Swedish military for well over a hundred years. The earliest recorded one that I, at least I could find a picture of was uh, made in 1895, and it was a similar, but in, and with some differences, of course, made of copper with a tin lining. And that was updated in 1940 with a version that looks very much like this one. And it was made from aluminum. And it was known as the M40AL, standing for aluminum. Early in World War II, aluminum was needed for wartime production, so they shifted over to making the mess kits out of stainless steel. And they referred to that as the M40FR, standing for stainless steel. However, by 1944, they had shifted back to aluminum for the production of these items, and they became known as the M44. Now, the windscreen, as you'll see when I take this apart, was not added to the kit until the 1960s. It is intended to, intended to be a standalone cook kit, so everything is within this that you need to cook a meal while you're out on the field. However, having said that, more often than not, meals were served from field kitchens and soldiers would use these to carry the meal from the field kitchen line to wherever they were going to sit down and eat it. But once again, this is totally up to the job of cooking a complete meal while you're out in the brook. I think it's interesting to know that they received a, a title or a, or a name or a nickname, I guess, in Sweden, known, and I'll probably not get the pronunciation right, known as Nuskbrücken, which means dirty bucket or filthy jar, if you translate that into English. And the reason for that nickname is because it's so easy to uh, leave small particles of food behind in the bucket, making it, you know, quite difficult to clean it out completely. And over time, that became a rather nasty mess inside of these. Now I can attest to that. I cooked and I have a video where I made a meal in this kit over a small wood stove while out in the wood last summer. And I'll tell you, it's very easy to scorch food inside of these stainless steel containers. And once that happens, it can be quite a job to get it out. So now, of course, I carry a, a small scrubby that I can use for cleaning it out and getting down to into the corners. I find the shape of this just a little awkward for my large hands to get into the corners to clean it out. Not impossible, of course, you know, it, and we can talk more about how you can keep them clean later. But uh, yeah, so the schnooks birken, if I'm pronouncing this correctly, or the dirty buck or filthy jar. Uh, let's take it apart. I'll show you what I have inside of this and then I'll do some measurements and we'll talk a little bit about its application as a bushcraft item. All right, so to begin, you can see that I have a, well, it's a Velcro band wrapped around this. They may have come, likely did come, with small leather belts that would feed through a small belt loop here to keep it all together in their kit. Originally, the soldiers would carry this inside their backpack, but uh, it made more sense later to carry them on the outside. So you wanted something that was contained and not going to rattle around or make any noise or lose any components of it. So let me take the cook kit itself out of the windscreen. We're going to put the windscreen aside for now and I'll talk more about it and its use in a minute. 
And this being the stainless steel version of the cook kit, I'll give the weights and the sizes, but it is quite a heavy kit. Now, I'll talk about comparing that with some other items you're likely already have or maybe considering to purchase, and then you can decide whether or not this is weight worth carrying. Again, being stainless steel, it is considerably heavier than the aluminum version. Uh, I have the weights of the stainless steel. I measured this myself. I don't have the weights of the aluminum, but I understand they're probably not half the weight, but maybe two thirds the weight of the stainless steel version. So to begin, we have two com primary components, which on top is a small, you might call it the lid, but you could also call it a cup. You could call it a bowl. You could call it a fry pan. In fact, it can be used for all of those things. In fact, I have used it for all of those things. We'll talk more about how that would be used in a moment. Now, inside of this, these things may not have come with the original issue, but Eric did send these along as they are authentic military issue. And I just, he wanted, he felt that it would be nice for me to have these. And this is a plastic or nylon cooksa that was military issue. Now, one of the things I want to point out, and I think it's of interest as well is, and I did know this, however, having said that, uh, you know, I, I, I didn't know the significance of it is that all military items issued by the Swedish military or Swedish government to the military would have three crowns stamped on them. And I can give you, a sh uh, maybe I'll just put a picture on the screen of three crowns stamped in each of the items. And that included the mess kits. Most of the mess kits, I say most because there is an exception, most of the mess kits had the three crowns stamped in it to show authenticity, authenticity that it was in fact a military issue. The exception was the stainless steel version of the mess kit. Not all of them received the three crown stamp, but they do have stamps on them that will indicate where they were made in the company or the contracted company that made them, of course, because they weren't all produced by the same company. And this one, in fact, has, and again, I'll have to put a picture because I'm li likely to get it on camera right now, a clover leaf with some initials in each part of the clover leaf down here on this part of the handle of the pan that indicates the company that made this kit. And there's some other markings on it as well. So what else do I have in the kit? This would be your eating utensils, a knife, fork, and spoon, also marked on the back. Put those aside. Now, inside of this bag, I have an alcohol stove similar to the Trangia, which is well-known Swedish alcohol stove, but this one is made by Svea. And as you can see, it's similar to, but different at the same time. It's considerably larger than a, a regular Trangia, or Trangia kit. This does not have a simmer ring. It has more of a bayonet mount than a finer screw mount on. You can just see there's just three little marks here and this tightens down very quickly. It does have an O-ring inside to keep uh, alcohol from leaking out. Um, this is heavy, heavy by almost twice the weight. I weighed this in Let's see, I did write this down. I weighed this in, and of course I'm gonna put all the statistics and everything I have to say about the, the mess kit and its uh, items that came with it in the uh, video description below. But this came in at, right, took me a minute. This came in at 6.4 ounces or 182 grams, and that is nearly twice the weight of my Trangia stove is. Now, we'll talk about performance because there was some discussion whether this would work as well with the Swedish military mess kit as a Trangia does. And I did do some comparisons and I'll give you that in a few minutes time. So this is made of brass, it is heavy duty. I don't think there's any way you would damage this short of putting it under the track of a tank. Um, I, I really like the performance of it. It's very simple. The one thing that it is missing, though, is a simmer ring. I would have preferred to have had a simmer ring. I did discover, however, that the Trangia simmer ring will work on this. It's not a perfect fit, but it's a close enough fit that you can reduce the amount of heat and flame so that if you want to bring your soup or whatever you're cooking in the pot to a simmer rather than to a full rolling boil, you can do that. All right, let's set that aside. And you'll note that I have it in a small plastic bag, and that's, of course, just in case I've got any alcohol alcohol left in this when I go to put it away, it doesn't leak in and leave that nasty taste inside of the pot. 
All right, there are, is one more item that I do not have, or I, I have not been storing inside of the kit itself, and that is the alcohol flask. And this also is marked with the three crowns and some Swedish writing on it. But this holds a good amount of alcohol. Now, I've got marine alcohol in this right now. That's why it's got a slightly blue tinge. It is a, a mostly, well, it's a denatured ethanol, so it's a, it, it performs very well in this little stove. I've also used, and do use on a regular basis, probably more often than the marine alcohol, I use straight up methyl hydrate, which is at 99% pure methyl hydrate, and I find that performs very well as well. So we're gonna put that aside. Now, let's start with some measurements and some weights and that type of thing that go with it. So, what I want to share with you is, first off, the mess kit in total. When I say in total, I'm talking about these two components, all with nothing else inside of it, without the windscreen. This will come in at one pound, 15 ounces, so just short of two pounds, and that would be 872 grams. Now. Of interest, uh, I was looking around my, my um, collection of kits and I wanted to see what I could put together that would come into about the same volumes and sizes that I could give you a comparison weight. So to start with, before I, sh I share with what it is I came up with, you have to understand that the bottom portion of this pot is a, a, an effective volume of 1.5 liters or 50 ounces, 50 fluid ounces. So it's a good sized pot that's as big as anything you're probably going to want to cook for any single meal. So this is a, the 1.5 liters and this, if you use it as a pot or a coffee cup or whatever, is going to carry a 0.75 liters. So I looked around and I found that my 12 centimeter zebra billy pot holds about 1.2 liters effectively. They say I can get up to 1.4, but you always got to leave a little bit of room down from the lid if you're going to put it on to boil. So about 1.2, so it is smaller than this, but I put with it a GSI 750 milliliter cup and lid, which is the same size of anybody's of interest. Of course, it's the same size as the Pathfinder cup and lid. So I put those two together to represent a comparison between the pot and the upper lid, portion pan, whatever you want to refer to it. And they came in at a combined weight of one pound, five ounces, or 608 grams. So yes, this is heavier by 10 ounces, but it is more compact. And that's one of the things that I want to, you know, the design of it is such that this not only acts as the lid, and it can be used in either upright like that or turned over like that either way, but it does act as a fry pan, as a bowl to eat out of, or as a coffee cup. So this is more compact in the sense that they go together as a system when compared with the Zebra and the 750 milliliter pot. Having said that, it is still 10 ounces heavier, so again, it depends on what you're willing to carry in terms of weight. Again, the aluminum version would probably save you a considerable amount of weight, making it even more attraction. Now, the other thing I can say about this is this is not just heavy, but it is bomb proof. I have no concerns that if I was to drop this, uh, drop something on it, that I would damage it in any way. I don't think that would be quite possible. Again, short of having it under the, the track of a tank, that is. So it is a good heavy duty. It's an effective design for packing away. And I, I, you know, I've, I've really come to appreciate what it's capable of. So, as I mentioned, this is a 1.5 liter pot. This is a 0.75 liter pot. This works as a pot that you can hold out over a fire. The bale is such that it has this hook, and I'm gonna show you a trick with the hook in a second, that can be hung over a fire and, and of course be suspended that way with tripod or whatever else you, you're gonna to use to suspend it over a fire. Now I said I would show you a trick with this, and this is not something I was aware of until I found it myself. The bale arm has a notch here right at the center. You might expect that. It helps keep everything centered and hanging and balanced over a fire but it has a second notch just off to the side of it. And I wasn't sure what that was for until I did a little research, and it is for using this hook, when articulated in that notch, can be passed through what would be the belt loop when the, when the set is all assembled, and now I've got a locking bale that holds out to the side. Now the benefit of that, of course, is I don't have to worry about getting my hands out over the fire, and I can use it like this for pouring from or just lifting on and off, off of the uh, the windscreen or the stove or whatever else I'm gonna be using it over. So it's just a small 
added feature that they built into the design that makes it even just that much more functional. So let me take that apart. All right, as I mentioned a minute ago, the frying pan portion of this or the lid portion can be used like this to close it off and of course save heat and have things come to a boil faster or even maybe some poaching inside of here. You probably could do some eggs using the steam from the pot below to cook inside of this. You can of course just use it as a lid like that. And you can, of course, use this separately as a fry pan. Now, as a fry pan, I cooked bacon in this in that video. Uh, as a fry pan, one of the things you're going to want to make sure you know, of course, is there's not a great amount of surface area in there. So you're not going to be cooking a whole lot in there, but it worked well for bacon. Once again, it did stick a little bit, but that was more about my control of the heat than it was because of the, the material that it's made with. But one of the things that they discovered, of course, this is a short handle. If you are going to use this as a fry pan, you're going to want to have an extended handle to allow you to get a little further away from the flames. And the answer to that was to make or build in two D-rings, as you can see them sitting up right here on the handle. And all you need to do is find yourself a stick, a little piece of maple that I picked up. I flattened off the bottom of this just to make it a little easier. But, oh wow, look at that. You know, and of course you can make this as long or as short as you want. But now my hand is well away from any flames and I'm not gonna be scorching my hand or leaving any marks on my hand from grabbing a hot handle. And I used it exactly like this when I was cooking bacon for that, uh, that video. So that's a nice little added feature as well. So what else can I say about this? Let's bring in the windscreen. And as I mentioned, the windscreen was added much later after the release of the original mess kits. And uh, the value of this cannot be overstated. This is made of aluminum. It itself only weighs seven ounces or 195 grams. It is designed to work in conjunction with either the Savea alcohol stove or a Tranja alcohol stove. And how it works is quite simple. If you look inside, you'll see two uh, metal bars, and by the way, all the bars on this, and as I understand also on the, the aluminum version of this stove are all made of stainless steel, so not everything is aluminum. But those two bars swing up and give you a height so that when the pot is sat down inside of the windscreen, raises it up over the alcohol stove to a reasonable distance and provides a windscreen to round everything so that there's enough airflow, but restricted enough that you're not losing any heat. So how you would use this is you would put the amount of alcohol you need or feel you need or as much as you want. You could fill it right up, I guess. I understand that when it's filled to capacity, it will run for a half hour. Uh, lay this down, bring it back so you can see it in frame, uh, light it, and just set the pot right down over it, or sorry, the windscreen right down over it. And you can wait or not wait, as far as that goes, for the uh, bloom to occur on it. And then when you're ready, set your pot down inside, and you're ready to go. And of course, you're going to want to put your lid on if you're bringing water to a boil or cooking up anything else. So there you go. So there is the military mess kit set up and ready to run. And I've used it this way for testing more than anything else because when I did use it to cook in, I wanted to use it over an open fire and that's how I used it. Now, I did mention that I had done some testing comparing this with a Trangia alcohol stove. Let me just give you what I came up with on that because I had heard that this doesn't perform very well. Um, it performs very well. Everything is relevant. It's not a speed demon. This is not going to bring water to boil really, really fast. But to be honest, it was quite impressive just the same. Uh, I, don't, I didn't record the temperature at doing this, but it was well above freezing when I did this. But what I did is I placed one ounce of methyl hydrate in the stove, lit it, place the 500 mils or two cups of water, the standard we do for tests like this, in the pot, put the lid on, put it over the stove once it had come to a bloom, and I got a boil time of seven minutes, 11 seconds. Not really fast, but very respectable. I mean, that's, that's not bad performance at all. But I let it run till the flames went out, and it did so at 10 minutes, 50 seconds. So plenty of time to bring two cups of water in this pot to a boil. Not really fast, but you know, still worked very well. So then I thought I'd try it with my Trangia. So I did the same test with the Trangia, again, using one ounce of methyl hydrate, 500 milliliters of water. It brought the, the water to a boil in six minutes, 32 seconds. So considerably faster and actually quite a respectable time, but it, it burnt out in 10 minutes and seven seconds. So 
Uh, you know, I wanted to account for the difference, and I think part of the difference is not only the design of the stove, but also the height, the pot gap from the top of the, the burner to the bottom of the pot, slightly higher in this one, which I think, um, actually, that, let's do a comparison here. Here's one of my older alcohol stoves, so you can see that the the uh, Trangi is a little lower than the Sevea is at the burner height. So with that increased gap, you often do get a faster boil time, and which can be a benefit, but it usually results in quicker consumption of fuel inside. So I think this being a little taller means the gap to the pot was a little bit lower, which may have resulted in a slower speed, but it also did save some of the fuel from being burnt out. I will say that it did take a little longer for this one to come to a full bloom before I put the pot on, so there was some wasting of alcohol there. Normally, in, in real field practice, I wouldn't do that. I'd put it on as soon as I lit it and just let it come to a bloom because time is not that important in reality. It's just a measure of compa to, to compare different stoves or burners together. So there we go. All right, let me put those aside. Okay, as a complete system, um, I think this works out really well for bushcraft. As I mentioned, this is not an ultralight system. So if weight is of a concern for you, you're, you want to want to look at something else. There are a lot of alternatives out here. Um, if you have the chance, if you come across one of these in stainless steel, then you may want to very much consider getting your hands on it, of course, depending on the price. Um, I don't have a lot of knowledge on what the current prices of these systems go for, but I can tell you that I am told that the stainless steel version goes at well over $100 to $125 Canadian. So uh, if you can get one under $100, it's probably an investment. And I don't mind using this because I don't think I could damage it even if I tried. Not that I would, of course. So the aluminum versions if uh, are still available. They've gone up in price, I understand, but they're still much cheaper than the stainless steel version. This has the collectability of being one of the few made in stainless steel. All right, I think we've covered this fairly extensively. Once again, I don't consider myself, well, I'm not in any way an expert on the use of these, but what I would like to do is invite you, if you have some comments on the use of these, if you think there's anything of vital importance that I missed or anything that you want to share from your experience, please do so. If you have good references to where people can go, if they're really interested in finding out more about the history of these pots, then please add that. But uh, I think I've given you enough information now on this, and what I'd like to do is wrap the video up. So as I mentioned in the beginning, this was a gift that was sent to me by Eric, who lives in Denmark. And Eric, once again, I want to thank you very much for this very generous kit. So in conclusion, is this something that I would use for going out in the woods and cooking in? Absolutely, I would. Now, given the weight, it would have to balance out everything else I'm going to be carrying in my cook or in my pack that day. But uh, I certainly, yes, I have lighter, I have lighter stainless steel kits that will do the job. I have some, certainly some lighter titanium kits that will do the job, but I don't think that I have anything that I can count on to be as sturdy or as effective or really as compact with all those things going in this together. I don't think I have anything that will serve all the functions that this does that's also this compact that comes with its own windscreen and works highly effective in that way. So uh, I, it's one of those things I would be looking at this kit saying, uh, yeah, it saves a lot of weight or saves a lot of space, but would I want to uh, actually have that much weight? And, you know, sometimes I would. I will be carrying this out on and off, and I'm sure in future videos you'll see me using this. So I can recommend the purchase of these things if for no other reason, just the historic value. And as this is a part of, of a bushcraft kit and a part of military history, I think this is just a wonderful thing to have. It's not something I would have purchased on my own, but now that I have it, I can see why so many people do like these things. All right, if you have any questions about this or anything else, please put those in in the question section below, but until I see you again, get out and explore and take that path less traveled. It will make all the difference. Bye for now.